Well, we're at one of Julie's bucket list items. What is that, honey? <laughs> it's my childhood fantasy. It's uh, we're Dracula's castle, Braun Castle in uh, Braun, Romania. So we're gonna check out Braun, Romania in this video and the castle. Here in Transylvania, the legend of Dracula brings in a lot of tourist dollars. And here in Braun, outside of the castle, there is a lot of souvenir shopping. There's different types of haunted houses and restaurants and hotels. And so we're not going to work too hard at debunking any of those myths. But we will give you some background on the story of Dracula and Vlad the Impaler. First, to get into this castle, it's 45 lei, which comes out to $9.83 in US dollars. And once you get past paying, you'll see a list of rules. And the most important rule is at the bottom of the sign. Make sure that you are visiting before midnight. <laughs> Braun Castle lies 25 kilometers outside of Brajov. It was initially built in 1212 of wood by the Teutonic Order. Now, that was destroyed in 1242 by the Mongols. And then a new fortress was rebuilt in 1377. The castle grew in importance, and from 1438 to 1442, the castle was used in defense against the Ottoman Empire. So we huffed it up the hill, out of breath. Behind us is Ron Castle. So basically it's $10 admission when you think of 4.5 lei to the US dollar. Most of you are probably aware that the legend of vampires goes back for a very, very long time. And they predate the actual story of Bram Stoker's book, Dracula. But Vlad the Impaler a real person, was the inspiration for Bram Stoker's character, Count Dracula. We're getting warmed up by the fire here in Side Braun Castle. It's electric, actually. I, I didn't know Dracula had electricity. <laughs> so Vlad the Impaler ruled parts of Transylvania from 1431 to 1476. And as his name implies, he had a favorite form of torture and execution, impaling. And there's many ways to do this, and it's quite grotesque. And I won't go into describing exactly how it's done, but the lucky ones died quickly. Now, Vlad would have the people that were impaled strewn across the countryside almost like scarecrows sticking out of the earth. And this worked kind of like a scarecrow, at least for the Ottomans. When the Ottomans came to invade, they saw the grotesque sight, and they turned around and left. So in a way, this practice protected the area. But on a positive note, this castle was actually home to Queen Marie from 1920 to 38. Okay, so I think that would look good on Julia. It looks like it's her size. So this was Queen Marie's bedroom that we're going into. So Queen Marie's bedroom. This is the literal throne. That's the potty. You lift the hatch. This is a traveling trunk and there's debate here. Julie and our friend Ruth believe that this is meant to transport people's clothes. But I believe that's where the vampires sleep and they're taken to other castles around Transylvania. As far as Queen Marie, this was her residence from 1920 to 1934 in the summer. And Queen Marie died in 1938. And her daughter, Princess Elena, was forced to leave the country after World War II in 1948 with the communist takeover. And in 1990, the princess returned to Braun Castle after the revolution that overthrew the communist dictator, Nicolae Ceausescu. The majority of the castle is now dedicated towards the memory 
of Queen Marie has been restored to the era and to the furnishings of what it was like when Queen Marie has this as her summer residence. So behind us is a Teutonic Knights outfit. So in the 1200s, they built a wooden fort here. And then in 1377, they actually built this castle to protect the area from the Ottomans. And it was the Order of the Teutonic Knights. I think I'm saying that right. I, I feel like that's like a, the Teutonic Plates. I think that's... So maybe as an earthquake thing? Okay, but that's the outfit. So as I enter this hidden staircase, risking life and limb for your viewing pleasure, don't forget to give this video a like, and don't forget to subscribe so that you can follow along as Julie and I share our experiences and our expenses as we slow travel with our two dogs, trying to show you what it's like to live in different countries and locations. Very steep, uneven stairs coming up here. Glad there's a rope. Watch your head. Julie, look up. Smile for me, honey. Show me those teeth. No vampire teeth in there yet. We escape through the secret stairway into what appears to be a library. And it seemed to be decorated quite nicely, full of old artifacts from the time period. I think the inside is really as amazing as the outside. Legend of Dracula aside, I could see why Queen Marie would want to make this a summer residence. It's really more comfortable and posh than I would say scary and foreboding in here, at least in the parts we've seen so far. From what we understand, the tour will take a twist, but for now, it's pretty pleasant. You impressed so far? I am. It's so cool. I love all the peaks and the little tiny rooms and all these cool stairs. It's, I'm a stair person. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you can see over our shoulder very well, but it's a, quite the view. We're now going to work our way up to the upper chambers where some of the more terrifying legend aspects of this castle are. Okay, so this is the optical illusion. It looks like these cars are going downhill, and but the water is coming what would look like uphill. On the fourth floor in four successive rooms, of the castle we are greeted by a story of the foreboding born from the representation of certain supernatural characters the Santandori, the Leo, the Grim Reaper, the Ghost, the Stradori, the Salamanari, and the Werewolves. We are entering the alarming kingdom of Romanian mythology. Night and darkness serve as the platform which amplifies the story of these characters, all symbolic of evil and fears forgotten in the mists of time. By contrast with the characters of the day, these creatures roam the lower floors of the castle and is accentuated by the way they are displayed. From daylight to when the night falls and the virtual space created on the fourth floor, we meet with these fearful beings who wander around the castle in darkness and cause a real impact. The story of the feared would not be complete without mentioning in our dialogue the one who was called the cruelest reigning prince of Wallachia, who became famous after 1897. Due to the title given by Bram Stoker to his novel Dracula, any plant, any animal, or stone can live so in no an children under 14 recommended Only into this world. have a past before birth and a future after birth. It might be useful to recall some of the myths and symbols of former times, especially Can't since over the past well, six yeah. centuries, yeah. many yeah. myths and legends have been circulating inside the walls of Braun Castle. The room of Count Dracula. So King Ferdinand had a little bed. My legs would come off the edge. 
Might be here for sure. That crowd's pretty cool. So we're in King Ferdinand's bedroom. So he's got his stuff back there. And there's the bed. I guess that's where the magic happened for King Ferdinand. Would you fit on that bed, honey? That's pretty small. I don't think so. I think my feet would come off at least. No, by the time Arya and Katie jumped in there with us, it would be all over. <laughs> so as we continue our tour through the castle, we went through the royal dining area and got to the really cool part, the armory. This is the area I like, the Game of Thrones room. Swords, shields, suits of armor. What's not to like in here? This is awesome. This would be a good outfit for me. I like it. Uh, I wouldn't wear this one. This looks like Vlad the Impaler's outfit. And that one just has too much fur. But Julie, do you think that outfit would look good on me? It's creepy. <laughs> no, no, but it looks good. I got a crown. I'd be oh, like yeah. the... You would look hot. Yeah, it would look really hot, especially oh, with that Turkish outfit like we had before oh, for you. Oh, geez, yeah. So if you're new to our channel, Julie and I, we're traveling the world with our two dogs. We're trying to see what it's like to live in different countries, and we're trying to share our expenses and experiences with you. We'll do interviews with expats, real estate experts, residency experts, and we do the tourist things and adventure stuff along the way, like we're doing the tourist stuff today. So hopefully you're going to subscribe and give this video a like and follow along as we journey across Europe and share our experiences. Now, if you ever visit Transylvania, things you need to know about vampires, how to kill them. One way is to stake it through the heart. Number two, expose it to sunlight. Number three, you can surround it with garlic. Number four, this is tricky. You got to find a were werewolf. You got to get it bitten by a werewolf. Number five, hit it with a religious symbol. That would be a cross. Number six, spray it with holy water. Number seven, stab it with the silver cross. You can even use a silver bullet, but make sure the bullet stays in the body. Number eight, set it on fire, but it has to be burned all the way to ash. Number nine, starve it to death, but I have no idea how long it takes. Number 10, you would decapitate the vampire and stuff it with garlic. Number 11, this is also tricky, feed it vampire blood. So those are the primary ways to protect yourself from vampires in Transylvania, or quite frankly, anywhere in the world. So we went to the castle gift shop. I'm looking for vampire teeth. You got some uh, Merlot here from the castle. You think that's really Merlot? <laughs> oh, this would be a great goblet. Look at that. Good drink. Oh, yeah, this would be a great goblet for some of this Dracula Merlot. I do have to say I was a bit disappointed in the gift shop. Not one single pair of vampire teeth to be found in Dracula's castle. Go figure. So I don't know if you all have realized, but Julie came here with extra protection today. A turtleneck. Look at that. We visited the castle on a weekday and we came early and we're glad we did. Come early people because uh, there's a lot of people that come later on. This is where they would dump oil down on people that might be trying to break in. So now while this castle is really a cool experience and was a lot of fun, a little bit of fact, Vlad the Impaler may not have ever even been inside this castle. He probably has seen it and passed by the area, but he actually didn't rule this area of Transylvania. So, so many people and so many reviewers will say, don't bother to come to Braun Castle. It's, it's a gimmick, etc. It is so worth your time. And I really can't believe I got to see it. This is a childhood dream come true. I don't know how many of you wanted to come see Count Dracula's castle as a child, but Julie did. That was interesting. She doesn't like garlic either. Makes me wonder. Really? What? Ah. 
<laughs> I could try this one. Uh -huh. No, thank you. Uh-uh. It's making me salivate. Midnight out with the dogs in Transylvania. You know, being out at midnight in Transylvania, it's not as scary as what you might think. We hope that you found our visit to Brown Castle interesting and educating. And as a reminder, Julie and I, we're retired. We're traveling the world with our two dogs. We're trying to see what it's like to live in different places, different countries, different cities. And we typically stay somewhere for one to three months, trying to share our cost of living and experiences with you. We also try to meet expats and share their information and their costs and experiences, as well as interview residency experts and look at real estate so we hope that you're going to give this video a like, that you're going to subscribe and follow along as we continue our journey. And until next time, have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye.